Hey, 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 hey! What's going on, Facebook family? Welcome to Equip for Destiny. My name is Bishop Eddie Gross, and I am so glad that you are all with me tonight. I hope you're having a, a wonderful day. I hope your week has been a wonderful week. Personally, my week's been a little challenging, but hey, I'm here. So, uh, first of all, we just want to thank you all for just taking your time in to just meet with us uh, every Thursday night, 7.30, uh, as we just get together, man, and just get into the word of the Lord. And so, uh, again, I just want to thank you so much for being here. So, I just want to, before we get into our, our, our segment tonight, uh, we've been talking about no more hurting in silence. Uh, talking about suffering and silence. But before we do that, I just want to make sure that none of the husbands uh, suffer in silence uh, next week. So if you hadn't already gotten that Valentine gift, brother, I'm just saying, I'm just putting it out there. I'm just, you know, just trying to help you out. You know what I'm saying? Just, just Bishop trying to help you out. You know, be sure you get out there and get uh, your lady, uh, your girlfriend, or your significant other. Be sure you get out there and get that gift. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Get them flowers, man. Uh, get that candy, you know. Uh, so just, I'm just trying to help you out. Just trying to put it, <laughs> trying to put that out there. And so uh, we hope you all have wonderful uh, celebration of love on tomorrow. And uh, I hope whatever you plan to do, whether you're gonna do dinner or whatever the case might be, I just hope you have a wonderful, wonderful time. So, so welcome to Equip for Destiny, where we are equipping progressive-minded people for destiny. Amen. Uh, where we, it is our attempt, uh, our challenge to bring you. Um, a a a a, uh, uh, a credible word from the Lord, and as we often say, this is a quality word for people who appreciate the Word of God. And so we're just so glad to have you. So just to get into, go ahead and get into the lesson tonight. We've been talking about suffering in silence. Uh, we've been coming out of uh, the book of uh, uh, Genesis chapter forty. We've been talking a little bit about um, the life of Joseph, and so. So far, this is part three. And so we talked about, first of all, part one, suffering in silence is first you got to admit that you're hurt. And so one of the things that Joseph did as we looked into this word uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago is that we come to understand that Joseph didn't sit there in jail acting like, you know, everything was OK. And so sometimes we as Christians, you know, we think that uh, acting as though we are inoculated to life's uh, disappointments and life's hurts and pains somehow makes us super spiritual. And I just want to uh, say that that's not true. And so Joseph, in as much as he loved the Lord, uh, was willing to say, hey, man, this situation hurt hurt me. It hurt me deeply uh, that my brothers uh, sold me into slavery. It hurt me deeply that Potiphar's wife lied on me. It hurt me deeply uh, that, the, uh, that the brother forgot about me. And so I, we just wanted to enforce the fact that it's human to feel. And we have to let ourselves feel and we, we can't, you know, being spiritual don't mean that you don't feel. It means you just don't stay in your feelings, but it doesn't mean that you don't feel. And so uh, we dealt with that a couple of weeks ago. So last week we dealt with the fact that we got to be willing to admit the confusion. And so Joseph was willing to admit that he didn't understand what he was going through and that that didn't make any sense to him. And I think that that sometimes that, you know, God wants to meet us where we are uh, but we have to be willing to admit, first of all, I, I, I don't understand this, Lord. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm confused. And what's happening to me doesn't make any sense to me. And we don't have to act like we know it all. We don't have to pretend like we always know what God is doing. Because I'm going to tell you, man, in my uh, short period of walking with the Lord, man, here over 30 years, is that there are times when I had no idea what God was doing. And I had always had people who want to tell me what God is doing. I always had someone who wanted to pontificate to me what they thought God was doing. But sometimes you just don't know. And, and you have to be able to trust God in the midst of your difficult circumstances and your difficult moments, uh, even when you yourself don't know what's going on. And so Joseph was able uh, to trust God, even though he didn't know what was going on in his life. I just want to challenge you that you may be in a situation where you don't know what God is doing. You don't know uh, uh, how the end is going to turn out. But what you do know is, first of all, to never stop looking for God in the midst of your circumstance because he will show up. So what Joseph didn't do was he didn't sit in his jail cell all in the corner all to himself uh, waiting on God. He, he asked uh, for help. And so that's what I want to talk about tonight is that uh, point number three is that we're not, if we're going to stop suffering in silence, we're going to stop this pretending 
you know, what we project to people is not really what's going on with us. You know, how you doing today, Bishop? I pray the Lord. I'm blessed. Highly favored. I'm walking on the clouds. Got my foot on the devil's neck. You know, it's okay that, hey, brother, sister, I'm going through. Will you pray with me? Will you, you, will you add me to your prayer list? Will you keep this in your prayers? I'm going through some stuff. I don't really know what God is doing in my life right now. It's okay. And so the thing that uh, I want to stress upon tonight is that Joseph was willing to ask for help. Oh, my God. The man was willing to ask for help. And sometimes, man, God can't meet us. Uh, where we are because uh, we don't want to, first of all, admit that we're hurt. We don't want to admit the confusion. And then we don't want to admit that we need help. And so sometimes we will just, we'll languish, man, in pain and agony and, and confusion and circumstances. And, and, and then people around us don't know what's going on with us. And then we blame God for not helping us while rejecting the help he surrounded us with. Oh, y'all not going to talk to me tonight. Yeah, we actually do that. We, 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 actually, we actually get mad with God because he's not showing up in our circumstances while we dismiss the people around us that God has sent to help us. Come on, help me somebody tonight. I have to say, ouch. Amen. Got the t-shirt, got the video, got the coffee mug. You know, I got it all. I'm preaching to myself tonight. We, we, we got to be willing to ask for help. And why is it so difficult for us to ask for help? You ever thought about that? Why? Why is it so hard for us to say to another brother or sister in Christ, our family, whomever it is, hey, you know what, man, just, you know, today just ain't a good day. Sometimes we just start with the day. Yeah, no, you know what, I'm just, I'm just not having a good day today. Instead of just, you know, projecting and pretending and disregarding our feelings and our emotions. Again, it's not that we should stay there, but 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 you can't you can't elevate if you don't first admit where you are. And so first we gotta be willing uh to ask for help. I hope you'll say amen to that. And so so we gotta be willing to to ask ask for help, man. And so uh the word tells us in Hebrews chapter twelve. Verse number one, he says, therefore, also, since we are surrounded, watch this now, by so great a cloud of witnesses. What he's trying to get us to understand is he's saying, wait a minute. I've surrounded you with people. He, it, it, and when he talks about that, he's talking about the great cloud of witnesses. He's talking about some of those who have gone on to glory. Who, who are in the heaven is now rooting us on, saying, come on, Eddie, you can make it. Come on, you can do it. Come on, you can keep the faith. Come on, you can make it to the end. But that's not just those, the cloud of witnesses in the air. That's also the cloud of witnesses that we got around us. I got a news flash for you. I don't care what you're dealing with. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what your circumstance is. I don't care how difficult it may be. I don't care how hurtful it may be. I don't care how tragic it may be. Listen to me. You're not the only one to go through that. And so God has allowed, oh, I'm blessed about it tonight. God has allowed somebody else to go through the very thing that you're going through so that they will have a frame of reference by which to minister to your need. Oh, come on, somebody. Yes, yes. And, and can, I, can I help you a little bit? A little bit? Uh, uh, the reason you're going through what you're going through is that God has so entrusted you with that situation so that you will be able to minister to another brother or sister about what it means to go through that type of trial and that type of situation. It ain't just for you. And one of the things that we do sometimes when we're hurting and suffering in silence, we think it's all about us. Come on, somebody. We, we, we think it's all about, oh, me and my and my situation. And and no, really in a sense, what God is doing is he's giving you a testimony. He's trusted you with the situation so that you can have a testimony by which you can tell all of somebody else. Mm. You ain't got to just throw scriptures at them. You, At the proper time, you can minister to them. You can tell them how you got through. You can tell them how God brought you out. But you can't do that if you're not willing. Come on, somebody, to do what? Ask for Hell, I'm talking to my Christians tonight. I'm talking to my brothers and sisters because sometimes we languish in silence. I'm talking to someone who may not be a Christian and you're trying to find your way and you're trying to figure this thing out and, and you're trying to make a decision about whether or not you want to make Christ your savior. 
But but you can't do that trying to figure it all out in your head. Oh my God, I think I stay right there. You you can't figure it all in your out in your head. You you think you're smart enough that you can figure it all out by yourself. So you can figure out whether or not this Christianity thing is real. You can figure out whether or not this stuff is phony. No, you're not going to be able to do it by yourself. You're going to have to ask for help. And let me give you a newsflash. You're not the only one who ever had those questions. Some of us, if we would be willing to admit it before we came to God, we thought this was a farce. We thought this thing was fictitious. We thought this was we thought this was just, you know, something that people did and didn't know what to do with themselves until we had a legitimate and authentic experience with Christ ourselves. And when we did, he became real to us. And the and 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 the and the and the uh, blessings of God shone in our hearts, and we accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior, and we realized, wow, man, Jesus is real. But you can't figure that out by yourself. You're gonna have to have someone who's gonna have to talk to you, minister to you, and lead you through understanding that information so you can make the appropriate decision at the appropriate time. Do you get what I'm saying? We don't do this uh, by ourselves. I hope you can say, man, I'm gonna bless somebody tonight. And so you got to be willing. To ask for help. Praise God. Amen. Amen. You're not weak because you ask for help. In fact, it takes strength to ask for help. I don't know who that's for. I'm trying to help somebody. So, so the so the spirit of independence, I want to talk about that tonight. The spirit of independence is not from God. I just want to be clear about that. Just want just want to help you about that. In fact, the word tells us as believers to be interdependent upon one another. There's no way in the scripture where scripture tells us be an island, be by yourself. You don't need anyone but you and God. No, 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 no. That is a spirit. That's the wrong spirit because all we, I need for salvation is God. No, no one can save me. No one else can help me get where I need to be. I have to accept Christ as my Lord and Savior. The only Christ gives me the ability to call myself a believer uh, 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 and a child of God. I got that. But as far as me living out my life here on earth, independence is not the way. That is not from God. In fact, it was the it was the archangel Lucifer who wanted to be independent of God, who, who started this war in heaven, which of course we know he lost. But the point I'm trying to say is spirit of independence don't come from God. That idea, I don't need nobody, just me and God. No, no, no. You need someone else. And I want to teach on that tonight. Uh, while I got a few minutes, I want to teach on that because I want you to understand uh, why it's important uh, and why we need one another. Can you say that tonight? We need one another. You cannot do this by yourself. So Joseph was keenly aware that he was not getting out of his situation by himself. So he asked somebody, would you help me? He interpreted somebody else's dream. I wish I had time to deal with that. In fact, Joseph, amen, opened the door for his blessing by serving somebody else. Come on, somebody. He didn't He didn't hang in his cell and try to figure it all by himself, but he served someone else. And by serving someone else, he opened the door for an opportunity for him to ask help from someone who was able to help him. I'm teaching good whether you know it or not. And so Joseph uh, knew, hey, man, I, I, can't, I can't do this by myself. I can't get out of this by myself. Here's a principle I want you to get tonight. Principle that God works through people, willing vessels. God works through people, other willing vessels. Can I say that again? God doesn't have hands. He doesn't have feet. He doesn't have arms. He works through people. And so this idea that somehow or another, I'm just waiting, just waiting on the Lord. I'm just waiting on God. And God has surrounded you with people to help you. But you won't ask for help. And you're sitting and suffering in silence because you're expecting God to just drop whatever you need down in your lap. No, it's going to come through somebody else. That seed is going to come through somebody else. That word is going to come through somebody else. That helping hand is going to come through another human being that looks like you and I. Come on, somebody. So we have to get this idea out of our head that we can do this all by ourselves. I, I, I got a little bit more for you. I want to bless you tonight, and I'm going to leave you alone. Watch this. So, so the word tells us that God works through each and every one of us. Here's a principle. You cannot get help unless you understand and respect the giftings that God has placed in others. 
In other words, and I'm trying to help my, I'm trying to help my people out tonight. You, you know, your anointing, your gift ain't gonna get you through. Let, let me let me look at you again because I, I want to make sure you're looking at me tonight. In other words, your gifting. I know you're gifted. I know you're anointed. Uh, I, I I know I know you can speak in tongues. Yaba daba do yamaha suzuki. I, okay, I get it. But let me help you, somebody. Your gift, no matter what it is, gift of prophecy, gift of teaching, uh, 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 gift of wisdom, no matter what your gift is, it's not for you. Oh, I could die. Lord has given me the gift of discernment, and I can see this, and I can see that, and I can tell the difference between, yeah, good, but that gift ain't for you. Your gift is for, is for someone else. So no matter how gifted you are, no matter how anointed you are, we still need the body of Christ. Can you say hello, somebody? We need one another. Peter tells us that we are all uh, 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 almost, it, it, he gives the analogy that we are all fitted and joined together, almost like bricks in a wall. He says we are all joined and fitted together where collectively we make up of the body of Christ. There's a place for you. And I want to help uh, some of my people who, you know, you know, who've given up on church. You know, you know, you, you've given up on church. And I understand what that may feel like. I understand what you may be going through. But God didn't intend for us to do this by ourselves. And we need the community of believers to help get us through. I, I, I'm going to stop right there because I must say something that's probably going to make little people upset. But I'm a big boy and I can handle it. What that means then is that we got to get out of this position where we use church to entertain folk and start really using church to minister to people because entertaining people and ministering to people is not the same thing. Mm, hold me up, Holy Ghost. And so so I think some of the problem is is that we, we've gotten to a posture where we go to church and sometimes we don't get what we need because the church we go to is so busy by trying to entertain us, prop us up, energize us, excite us, and really in a sense, the Holy Spirit is never given an opportunity to minister to us. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so you need to be sure you're somewhere where you're being ministered to, not being entertained, not being made to feel good, not being entertained to feel like you in a click. I'm talking about somewhere where the word of God and the spirit of the Holy Ghost is speaking so clearly that you know you're being nourished in your sanctified soul. And that when you leave there, you got enough knowledge and enough anointing on your life to make it through the week. And you ain't dragging through the door by the time you get back on next week. Amen. Praise God. Your gift is not for you. Let me give you a little scripture back that up because some of y'all looking at me weird. All right. So watch this. So the word says, watch this now, our gift is not for ourselves. The Bible tells us, watch this, in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, he says, watch this now. He says, therefore, there are diversities of gifts, but the what? Same spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the what? Same Lord. Can you say amen to this? The word says, and there are diversities of activities. Basically saying there's different gifts. Uh, that work in different ways on different people. So just because I have the same gift you have don't mean my gift have to operate like your gift. Come on, somebody. He says, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the, watch this, don't miss verse seven. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Oh my God, I feel like preaching tonight. And so what he's trying to get us to understand he said, we all got gifts. Each and every one of us got at least one. He says, it is the spirit of the Lord that give each every one of us at least one gift. He says, and every gift is not the same gift. I may preach, you may teach, or we have the same gift that operates differently. I may preach from the pulpit. You may not preach from a pulpit. You may, you may preach out in the community. You may preach somewhere else. You may, you may, your gift may be a little bit different. Your preacher may come through writing. Your, your, your preacher may come through song. I don't, I'm just saying it. He's trying to get us to understand. All of us ain't got to be the same thing. Everybody don't have to be a bishop. Everybody don't have to be an apostle. Come on, somebody. Everybody don't have to do the same thing. There's enough to do where we ain't got to mimic one another. Come on. Right? But in the end of the day, our gifts are not for us. Oh, my Lord. I want to talk to my people who like to cook. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. And you ever notice that when you sit down to cook a meal, it's particularly when you're cooking for your family, and man, you got a pot of this and you got a pan of that. You got some baked chicken. You got some. You got some green beans, some black eyed peas. You got some collard. Oh wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, get, I was getting caught up there for a minute. I'm sorry. But anyway, you get my point. You get my point. But isn't it amazing that when the cook gets through cooking, they're they're almost the last person who wants what they cook. It's 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 odd that they cook it, but they really don't. They don't really have an appetite for it. Do you get what I'm saying? But but let someone else cook for them. <laughs> and they enjoy it because they're receiving it. Ministry is that way. And I'm trying to get us to understand. When you're suffering in silence, don't disregard the gift that somebody's put in, God has put in someone else. Because he put that gift in them to serve you. And if you're trying to eat your own cooking, you're trying to grow off your own preaching, you're trying to grow off your own teaching, you're trying to grow off your own. No, 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 no. No, you won't grow that way. And so you need a mentor or you need other people who are farther along. I have men in the gospel that I listen to regularly. I have what I call uh, mentors from a distance. They don't even know they're mentoring me. Uh, 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 you, you know, Dr. Tony Evans is one of them. I, I, I read his stuff. I listen to his stuff. Uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm always consuming something from him, not him, uh, Dr. Robbie Zachariah, many of them, uh, uh, the, the, the great Christian apologists. I listen to him, a lot of people, read a lot of things because I can't feed myself. I'm trying to help you tonight. That whatever you're going through, whatever you're dealing with, open your heart. Don't let pride cause you to suffer in silence. Open your heart and let God usher in the word you need. Usher in that person in your life that you need. Some of us are just as dry in our spirits because we're trying to water ourselves. We're trying to feed ourselves. We're trying to do it all ourselves. And then all along, we're suffering in silence. I just want to bless you tonight. And I want you to know that God has surrounded you with the appropriate people. Yeah, be, be, be discerning. Be wise. You can't tell everybody everything. I get that. But, but if you don't have someone... That you can share openly from your heart. And you ain't got to pretend. You can take off the. You can stop speaking Christianese and just come out and say, "Bro, let me tell you something, man. I went through some day, man. That's some crap, bro. I don't know. I'm, this, 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 this messed up. Someone you can get real with. You need to find somebody, and also you need to be somebody that people can be real with. Are you so spiritual that folk can't even talk to you? Are you so anointed that 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 people can't even share with you what they're going through because you're so quick? To come back with scriptures and prophecies and, you know, can, can, can you be real? Can people talk to you? Because there's people suffering in silence who need the gift that's within you. Okay? All right. God bless you. I'm so glad to have you with me tonight. I thank you so much for just coming by, just stopping by for a few minutes, man, to sit with the bishop. And I'm glad that you gave me an opportunity to speak into your life uh, tonight. Again, my name is Bishop Eddie Gross, and this is the Equip for Destiny podcast where we are equipping progressive-minded people for their destiny. And if you want to um, uh, find us, you can find us on Facebook. We're here, Equip for Destiny. We're also on Twitter. Uh, we're also on uh, YouTube. Uh, you can see us on our website at uh, equipfordestiny.org, where we have a lot of different resources for you there. We have a one-minute devotional uh, there that we do. We have other resources. We have other messages. We have some preaching messages there for you as well. Uh, some of the uh, sermons that God has blessed me to share. Uh, also, if you're in, uh, podcasting, you can find us on uh, Apple Podcasts, and you can also find us on Spotify. So wherever you consume your information, you can find us. Uh, but do, listen, but do let us know uh, whether you're enjoying this or not. If you don't mind, leave a comment below. Let me know how this uh, this segment is been, uh, benefiting you, how it's blessing you. I pray that something's been said tonight that's encouraged your heart. Uh, and I pray uh, that as you continue to go forth, that you no longer suffer in silence, that you open your heart and let God minister to you as he uses another vessel uh, to do that. Amen. All right. God bless you. May God continue to smile upon you. Oh, before we go tonight, our uh, scripture for the week. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our scripture for the week uh, is coming out of Psalms number 67, uh, verse 1 through 2. You may see it here uh, in your uh, superimposed on your screen. Uh, but that's going to be our meditation scripture for the week. I want you to read it and meditate upon it all week long. 
And uh, I want to know what you get from it. And so the scripture says, God be merciful to us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us that you uh, that your way may be known on the earth your salvation among all nations. Amen. That's our scripture, meditating scripture for the week. God bless you. May God uh, continue to smile upon you. Again, my name is Bishop Eddie Gross, and thank you for tuning in uh, to Equip for Destiny. You have a blessed day.